Hey everyone, it's Rich Bennett, host of Conversations with Rich Bennett, bringing you an exciting chance to win with our latest giveaway sponsored by Tar Heel Construction Group. Get ready to make a splash just by tuning into the podcast. Yes, you heard that right. While you're soaking up our latest episodes, listen closely for a special splash sound. When you hear it, remember the episode name. Here's what you do next. Shoot us an email at podcast at harfordcountyliving.com with the episode title. Each splash sound means a new chance to win. So the more you listen, the better your chances. If you don't have email, then just leave a voicemail from our website at conversationswithrichbennett.com. What's the prize? How about a brand new waterproof Bluetooth speaker? Perfect for listening to our episodes, whether you're in the bath, on the beach, in the pool or on the go. You have until the end of May to send in your entries and we'll announce the lucky winner on June 3rd. Don't miss out on this splashy opportunity brought to you by Tar Heel Construction Group. Dive into our episodes and win big. Hi, my name is Jenny, owner of Divine Timing Doula Services. I will provide the support and guidance you need during your transformational journey through parenthood. Together, we can welcome and care for you and your little one in a place of serenity and gratitude. Coming up on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. I got to hold him, like I said, for like a whole 25 seconds before the NICU had to whisk him away because because he's so small, like like the body heat and all that, like he just, he he needed to survive that way. And his um, levels were like kind of iffy at the time. And so they were like, because he's so young Mm -hmm. and he also was one of those that preeclampsia can also make them like not gain a lot of weight. And so he was two pounds, eight ounces when he came out and he went down to one pound, 12 ounces. (gasps) Yeah. Cause when you're born, then they like sometimes lose a little weight. And so he went down to like a pound, 12 ounces. Oh God. Yeah. At one month old, you know, those um, stuffed animals and carters that you can get that are like this big. That's how big he was. Like we have a we have a picture of him right next to one of his Carter stuffed animals. Wow. Yeah. Like he was he was tiny. And and for preeclampsia, they're like, okay, our job is done. The baby is out. But your body sometimes takes twenty four hours to realize it's not pregnant anymore. Oh. And that's when we had the issue that I almost died. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, we've been together. Oh man, you already said it. I was going to ask her. She remembered the date. I am sitting here today with a young lady who was introduced to me <laughs> by one of my co-hosts that loves to give me a hard time, Kayla Dykeman, who, oh, she couldn't join us today. I'm so sad. <laughs> I am sad, Kayla, just to let you know. I was we hoping love you. you could make it. Um, and, but, you know, it's going to feel, I'm not going to feel right not getting picked on. But I have Ashley Real here, who is a, all right, buckle up for this. <laughs> She's an authorpreneur. She teaches kids yoga. She writes poetry. She uh, is a stay-at-home mom with three kids. Uh, what am I missing here? I know I'm missing something oh, else. <laughs> I also dress up as princesses for the playroom. So For the what? For the playroom, which is a kid's play area in um, Forest Hill. Uh, yeah, Forest Hill. So a lot of things. I'm a lot of things. <laughs> Which princess? Uh, all, 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 all the. You just, can't do Ariel you know, unless you wear a wig. Oh well, yes, I wear all the wigs. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be Ahsoka on May fourth for Star uh, uh, Wars. A what? Ahsoka. She is a Star Wars <laughs> character. <laughs> so. I guess I need to start watching Star Wars now <laughs> again because I was like, oh, what? <laughs> Wait, okay, so you do that? I do. What do you they call that? Cosplay or whatever? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. So I do it for the kids. So I do just a lot of things for kids. On top of being a mama three. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> so she, she wrote her her first book. I'm saying her first, it's her first and only book so far because she's going to write another one. Um, and tell everybody the name of the book and why you wrote it. Because okay. the story's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so it's called The Tiniest Superhero, A NICU Story. 
And the book was actually written and created while, or mostly while I was in the NICU with my uh, firstborn son because I had him at uh, 30 weeks and three days uh, due to preeclampsia and HELP syndrome. So, so he was preemie. When you were sitting in the NICU, yes. laying in the NICU, I yes. guess, <laughs> did, I mean, did you have pen and paper and you just started writing all this down or yes. you remembered it? Um, so. I wish I actually brought my notebook with me because I have the old notebook with all these notes in it. Oh, wow. Yes. And I keep that for just my own safekeeping. Yeah. Um, but really how it started was uh, with everything that happened. Should I start from the way beginning or kind of go right here? And then you know, go go with, yeah, start from the so way beginning. Start from the way beginning. Okay. So now, when I say way beginning, I don't mean when you were born in Connecticut. So born you know? October 25th, 1992. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, on a hot side, no, um, so, <laughs> so, uh, Almost a Halloween baby. You were a Halloween baby? No, I almost? said you oh, were almost, almost a yes, Halloween I, baby. And you know no, what? I'm a summer baby. You know what? Halloween is my favorite holiday. Oh, so come I got, on. I cosplay. What do you expect? <laughs> That's one of my favorite. I mean, it's not my favorite. Oh, no. But I like that. I like Halloween more yes. than Christmas because uh, we all just get together and mm-hmm. grill out. Oh, that's awesome. Because the, the, the adults need food when they're yes. bringing the kids around. Yes. I love all those houses yeah. when you go trick-or-treating and, like, you have the adults that are like, hey, want a burger and a beer? Yeah. And like, yes, I do. Yes. I love <laughs> doing that. I'm dealing with my that. kids that are, like, sugared up right now, so of course I want that. And we live in a cul-de-sac, so oh, a lot of the so people nice. just stay there and let the kids walk around, the, although... <laughs> all the candies at, at the bottom of my driveway uh-huh. from all the neighbors bringing mm-hmm. it over. But, so, oh, no, I, I, I love I love Halloween. Halloween. Well, like how I said, I cosplay. I mean, I tell stories. Of course, I wrote a book. Mm-hmm. So, of course, Halloween's my favorite because it's all, <laughs> it's a lot of it's, like, very fictional. And, like, you can create mm-hmm. your own aspect of it. And so I just love Halloween. My kids love Halloween. And I'm that one crazy adult that dresses up with them and walks around. So it's really fun. That's not crazy. A lot of people I do I love that. it. I love it. Well, not around in my neighborhood. So I I, I do it. it all the time. I just don't do it for Halloween. Oh, there you go. No, well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you so go. yeah, Rich, why um, are you dressing up walking around? <laughs> hmm. Why okay. are you Superman today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, all so, right. <laughs> Born okay. October 25th, so, 1992 yeah. in Connecticut. <laughs> so anyways, um, yes. Yeah, so my son, uh, basically, I was telling what I was telling Rich earlier is that um, I had these signs of preeclampsia that were overlooked, unfortunately, because I was a younger mom. I was 24 at the time when I was having my son, and I am a type of person that is very... Um, research oriented and so it was my first baby I had a notebook and I'd bring it to the doctor being like these are all the symptoms I'm feeling this is what Google said what do you say kind of things yes I am a Google doctor I know that people hate that (laughs) but hey it's what got me to like helping myself with preeclampsia so sometimes I don't think what preeclampsia is yes that's Uh, it yeah so I'll I'm going to get to that. So, um, yeah. (laughs) So, basically, that's uh, what I would do. And at around 26 weeks, I was feeling kind of off. My symptoms were that I had um, swelling in just one leg, or like more swelling in one leg than the other. Um, I do wear glasses, so I wasn't really counting this as one. But looking back, it was one that I was like seeing dots in my vision um Mm. i i mean they said i had slightly elevated blood pressure i also did have slight protein in my urine but my doctor came to me and i don't know if it's just again i was 24 still running doing all these things i think she so you were athletic i was athletic yes and that's the thing that stinks with preeclampsia is that preeclampsia will attack you no matter what right yeah wow yes and so um basically my doctor came to me and was like hey uh you may have this thing called preeclampsia preeclampsia I'll see you in two weeks and being my first baby and not really being in the medical field Mm -hmm. I'm like okay I may have the same like I thought it was like something kind of like hey you may have you know like gestational diabetes like you would just have to watch what you're eating kind of thing like that and so yeah do they know what causes preeclampsia Pro, pro, so March of, or pre-clamp? pre preclampsia, pre-clampsia. pre-clampsia. Um, So March of Dimes is still doing research still on research. it. Okay. Um, one thing that they are finding that it is unfortunately coming from the father. 
So really? I, yeah. So part of it is that that is part of the research that it is a certain thing coming from the father and what a lot of people like, especially when it's your first baby. So like my husband and I, we had a second and third and mm-hmm. it got I had like less and less um, chances of getting it. So I did have postpartum with my daughter, but with my third, I didn't have it at all. I'm getting looked at. They no, kind of know the signs now, like if you've had it before, how to like help it and how to help you not get to that point um but was your husband in the military by chance no okay yeah (laughs) okay no but um it just it just so happens that it could be your body like just how you guys are and so we've talked about it i mean granted my husband and i are never you know getting divorced or anything but if if that seemed to happen i found someone else and i went to get i I went to get pregnant again with a different partner Mm -hmm. i am at more chance of getting this again than, really? than with him, yes. That's what March of Dimes has like kind of been re- in research, or at least like when I was wow. working with them with my son, yes. So there, but it's like it's still such new studies. So they're still learning so much, but it is very prominent in women now, and that's what's crazy is that I like met a lot of women working with March of Dimes that they also had babies prematurely due to preeclampsia, and but so it's mind boggling how it's not something that's being like more researched. So. Do you know what, I mean, are there, I mean, thank God. Yes. You're, well, wait a minute, before we continue, yes, because so you and I your baby had, were almost not here. Yes, we're almost <laughs> not here. So let me explain preeclampsia first, because you did yes. ask that question. So preeclampsia is um, basically when your blood pressure gets elevated, you have protein in your urine. Um, other signs are that, like how I said, I had dots in my vision, you start swelling, which swelling is now they're not really considering one, but that was like my biggest sign, which is crazy too. But it's because um, edema, edema, like when you have oh. swelling, when you like press, uh, it can happen in pregnancy kind of yeah. just in general. And so they're not really considering that much of a sign, but that is... That was my biggest sign because my left leg was so much bigger than my right. Like it was insane. I, like my husband and I were joking about it, like how how it like just like <laughs> looked like an elephant trunk compared to the other one. And so I had all these wow. signs, and for people to be like, "Oh, it's pregnancy in the summer," because my bo- my hus- my son was supposed to be born in August, ended up being born in June. Um, it was crazy. W- so, were you still exercising at this time? I was. I was. Yeah. So I wasn't doing as much as I was used to because he had. I was. Um, he was my only baby that was like a post, what do they call it, posterior placenta. So I could, I couldn't feel his kicks as much, but I could feel right. the placenta more. <coughs> and it hurt while running. Okay. With my other two, I didn't have that. So I was running fine. Okay. Um, but with this one, I was doing definitely like more yoga, a little bit more lifting. But yeah, I was still working out during Even this. when you, your leg was swollen. Yep. Wow. Yep. Because I thought I just you thought, are badass. <laughs> Thank I'm so, you. you are seriously. <laughs> Damn. Because, because people are just like it's pregnancy in the summer, and I'm like, okay, I guess that's what it is. And so basically, that preeclampsia is is essentially that you're like elevated blood pressure and mostly the protein in the urine. And then the thing is that preeclampsia, how scary it is, is if it's not caught or if it's not caught at the right time, it can um, go into two different directions, which is eclamptic, which is you can seize, or HELP syndrome, which is an acronym which for a bunch of things, but basically <laughs> I can't remember the whole name of it, but uh, with HELP syndrome, it's basically your platelets are going down, your liver enzymes are going up, and your kidney enzymes are going up. So basically you're – how I explained to you earlier, Rich, it's your body is basically having a civil war with your placenta because wow. it's trying to kick out that placenta. It's a um, it's an object that your body doesn't understand or know. The mm-hmm. placenta is then retaliating because it's like, hey, I'm trying to take care of your baby. And so then your body starts almost like, like imploding on itself because even when – like my help syndrome was starting to dissipate because yes, I did end up having help syndrome right after. I'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> um, when it starts to dissipate, like my my liver was still um, slightly enlarged, and so you have to wait for it to go down. Yeah, it's like wow. your liver starting to expand, your kidneys are starting to expand, but your platelets are going down. You almost need blood transfusion. It's it's insane. Jesus, it's insane. Yeah, the things we do for kids. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this was your first. This was my first, yes. And how I had two others, it's because I'm crazy. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> it's because my. <laughs> I had a great team of doctors after this. Obviously, I did not use this same doctor after I did my research. Right. Um, with newer doctors, I was told several times that I, it could only go up from there and that I would be uh, watched very, very carefully with my second. With my third, I didn't have to be watched as carefully because they found that I was the one person that it was just my first child and that's why it happened to me. The one percent. I was the one percent, yes. So for one percent of women, it's because it, the only reason is because it's your first child. But most of the time it's because um, due to like being slightly overweight, right. uh, the African American culture for some reason gets it at like a thirty percent. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And there's Mm. I think there's one other thing, too, and then I was the one person that was like, hey, because I was – oh, it, when you're older, that's – if you're having a child at an older age, it could be like more prominent. Like around 40 or so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, because you're seeing more and more people doing that now. Mm-hmm. They, wanted, they want their they, career, career first. And then, yeah, and so wow. I, that could be also another reason why it's, like, becoming more apparent. Um, but, yeah, I was that 24 active girl – woman i guess i should say Jeez. um i was that 24 24 year old that i think she was just like hey you know you're doing your research and you know you don't hit any of these other other but, but there's checks. nothing wrong with that yeah i mean granted i know it, it, all right so because and correct me if i'm wrong but you have anxiety right i do have anxiety okay yes. <laughs> and a lot of times they'll say if you have anxiety don't research yep because you but, go down the rabbit hole but this, see this is what, what I, else you're supposed to do this is what i tell my husband all the time because he laughs at me and i joke with him i'm mm. married to a police officer sometimes i'm like <laughs> i should be married to a doctor because i have all these crazy <laughs> thoughts and he'll be like i don't know and i'm like you should know <laughs> um but this is what i always snap back now like yeah. whenever i'm going down the rabbit hole i'm like i caught my preeclampsia like you can't get at me <laughs> like i'm like i'm the reason that i survive it wasn't the <laughs> doctor it was no one else it was my like intuition and it's true they Mm -hmm. tell you that you need to follow your gut feeling and my gut feeling um was to take myself to the er uh so basically uh to backtrack a little bit good thing you did yes yes so to backtrack uh a little bit um yes my doctor said this did not tell me to go to the ER or anything. She, uh, but this was the only way I knew the name preeclampsia right. um, was that, hey, you may have this thing called preeclampsia. I'll see you in two weeks. And I was like, okay, well, I'm originally from Connecticut. What the hell is preeclampsia? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So I look into it. I'm like, this does not sound good. But again, the doctor did not seem worried. So I was like, okay, right. like, I, I'm not too worried. Drove myself to Connecticut, which is a four hour drive for my baby for, shower. Now, for those of you listening, in case you don't know, she lives here in Maryland. Yes. And at the time, she was here in Maryland, yes. too. Yes, so yeah. I do live here in Maryland. Um, and so all my family lives in Connecticut, and all of our friends lived in Connecticut at the left time. Left the ER and drove to left, Connecticut. Well, I left. No, this was a couple of days after the doctor's appointment. But okay, again, okay. Like, Oh, that's right. You weren't to the ER yet. Okay, gotcha. So basically, I was in Connecticut, had my baby shower. You know, again, signs are there. Um, Probably getting 10 times worse because I'm not only driving, I'm walking around with friends on the beach in the heat of of June, um, doing all these things and, like, still not feeling good. But everyone's like, it's pregnancy in the summer and i'm like okay i've Isn't never been it so cute i've never been pregnant you're glowing no that's my blood pressure like coming out of my ears i am not glowing i am <laughs> about to explode that's really what it is and so um <laughs> See, I can make you laugh. It's a good thing we can laugh about this, though. Yes, 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 I know. Now now that it's years later, um, I can laugh about it because I've talked about it so much. I remember there was a time when I would cry every time I talked about it. So now I'm like, yeah, I can laugh about it. Um, Anyway, so I go to go home and I get to New York. And I'm not New York City. There, you know, like by close to the GW. I wasn't mm-hmm. in the city turning around, but the GW, I, uh, the George Washington Bridge. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> the GW Bridge. Yeah, George Washington Bridge is in New York. And so I was near that. I turn around and I call my parents crying because my husband couldn't take off work. So I drove myself to Connecticut and I was Whew. like, "Oh my gosh, I can't." I can't drive home to Maryland. And then I was freaking out because my doctor told me I may have this thing. I was researching it. It didn't sound good. I was like, I don't want, 
I don't wow. want to have my I don't want to have my baby at Yale and then my husband right. being at, you know in Maryland and not being able to see our baby for how many months and so I was freaking out so my dad stepped up um, he drove me home to Maryland uh, on top of also bringing me to get blood work done because I was like listen I I wow. called, yeah I just did not feel good and I was like I, I'm gonna get blood work done and what I was telling Rich earlier too is that. My um, my biggest inkling to go to the ER was I had one of those 50 milliliter waters. I drank two of them in like a four hour span. Uh, and again, people are like, oh, it's pregnancy, right? But I go to get blood work and they told me I was dehydrated, trying to find my veins. And I was like, mm, this does not add up. Shouldn't be dehydrated. No, I should not be dehydrated. I should be very hydrated yes. at that point. And so... Um, it was like a day. Yeah, Man. I get home. It's about a day later, and I went to go grocery shopping, and I just stood there in the grocery store being like, I absolutely do not feel good. And so I just left my cart, and I think that was my biggest sign of, like, I, I, I truly believe that I was, like, either about to go eclamptic or something there because I just did not feel good. About and to go I what? Call, e- eclamptic. Like, I felt like I was probably – if I kept on walking around, I'd have probably seized because of what I did. Seized meaning – like. Like have a seizure. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, because okay. that's what eclamptic is. And okay. so um, I knew that. I was yes, it. yes, you were testing me. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I called my husband. I'm like, hey, we need a. We need to go to the ER. I called my doctor. I was going to go to Upper Chesapeake because that's what was close to me. Right. And um, I was at uh, GBMC at the time. And they're like, no, come here uh, just because you have all your information's there. And right. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So I get there, you know, my husband, he's like dressed for work and everyone, again, I have anxiety. So everyone's like, oh, this is just Ashley having anxiety. Like I call my parents and they're like, you're fine. Like summer pregnancy. Like that's what this is. Like everyone. Yeah, but not being dehydrated. No one understood me. And so I get to the doctor and I don't want to say that. I was not happy, obviously, this was all happening. Right. But there's that weird sense of when you're a very anxious person feeling validated when you are correct that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I hate saying that because obviously what I went through was horrible, but I felt so validated once I went there. And uh, basically, they took me in, they took my blood pressure, and it was like 217 over like 115 or something. It was like something insane. The nurse walked out, turned like turned white, walked out. I didn't know what it was. I just saw her walk out and I looked at my husband and he's the one that was like, oh my gosh, like you're like, you're, you're really sick. Like your blood pressure is very high. And then the other nurse came in being like, I don't know how you haven't seized yet. Put me on this medicine called magnesium, which basically, um, magnesium, what it is, it feels like it's crazy. It almost makes you feel like you have the flu. Like it feels like you have a fire within you or like I, I also felt the same way when I had COVID um, during you know, right. all that crazy time. And I felt very, it felt very similar to taking this medicine. It feels like you're like burning inside slightly because it's start, it's, um, it's slowing down your muscles. Like so okay. that you can't, so you can't see basically. Right. So when you have a high blood pressure like that, they immediately put you on magnesium and you have to be on it for 24 hours. Just out of curiosity during yes. this time, yes. especially when your blood pressure was that high, because yes. I'm sure they were monitoring the baby as well. Yes. How was the heartbeat and everything with the baby? So David was okay, okay, which good. was great. Um, it wasn't until later that he started, like, kind of – desk. Well, okay, so it's crazy, too, because we talk about, like, modern medicine and how they help, like, keep you survive. But there was a point where I think my son was trying to get out of modern medicine and being like, my mom's not doing well. Like, let right. me get out. Because I was put – it's crazy, and I – uh, I was put on magnesium three times during my stay at the hospital. That, d- d- three times. Wow. And it's ve- it's toxic for your body. So you have to, like, make sure you're peeing it out. It's crazy. Uh, but they do it so that you don't seize and go into other issues. And so um, I was put on magnesium for 24 hours when I was transferred to University of Maryland Medical Center, which, like, shout out to them because they were absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Best decision GBMC did. And I'm not going to name any doctors or anything, but best decision that GBMC did was to send me there because they were absolutely incredible yeah. all the nurses the NICU is amazing there like I my um youngest son had RSV and when we had to get transferred to yeah RSV RSV is it's just a it's basically a bad cold for babies oh, okay. yeah um and so when he had it and we had to get transferred for oxygen I was like send me to University of Maryland like that's the only yeah. hospital I ever want to be at now because as scary as it was they were absolutely amazing um during that whole time but um, 
Anyway, so I get I get transfer I get ambulanced to uh, University of Maryland Medical Center, and they it was crazy because GMB and C. I know that they were trying to sugarcoat because my blood pressure was so high. Right. I kind of wish they didn't because they were like, oh, we're transferring you because you kind of went a little like, um, they were like you went basically uh, too horrible too fast in a sense like they said yeah. it in a different way but basically they're like that like like the Ron Burgundy, Burgundy that escalated quickly like I feel like that <laughs> I feel like that's what I felt like I felt like I was, <laughs> I was an anchor man like well that escalated quickly right there so they sent me because they didn't have room in the NICU and I think that they were just like you know University of Maryland Medical Center is gonna help a little bit better in, at this mm-hmm. point and so they send me over there saying that they'll probably only keep me for a day and then I'll probably go on bed rest. I get to University of Maryland at 29 weeks. Mind you, I'm at 29 weeks. And this is why also I think it was look past because preeclampsia can show up as early as 20 weeks, but usually like it typically shows up around 32, 33. And the answer, oh, wow. the answer to like basically solve the problem of preeclampsia is to take out the baby. Well, when you're at 29 weeks, that's not the answer. Right. And so it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging because they're trying to keep you afloat while your baby's still cooking. And there was many times when I went in there. And so I, when I went mm. in there, they're like, hey, you're staying here until you have this baby and we're looking to keep you here until at least 35 weeks. So of course my anxiety goes crazy. Wow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then there was at one point I think it was like three or four days later that I was in that hospital um, and David was trying to come out and I was on and I was on magnesium and I was like I was contracting. I was already. Yeah. At 30. So at that point, I was 29 weeks. So I was around like um, or. Yeah. So it was like when I was still 29 weeks because he came out 30 weeks and um, three days and I was in the hospital for about two about two weeks. So maybe, yeah, 29 weeks. So I was in at 28. Sorry, just all the, all the things. Uh, <laughs> how, it, how it gets there. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I was there for a couple of days and I was off the magnesium at this point. And okay. then I got like an anxiety attack about something. I think I had b- really bad heartburn or something. And they Ooh. thought, yeah, and I just, I just got nervous about it. I just got transferred to the lower level of labor and delivery. And I think it was just the thought of like, I'm going to be living here for a month. And it right. just overtook on top of having this um, heart, um, having all these symptoms and just not feeling good I went I started going to into slight labor and they tried to stop it because they're like he's still too young and he needs to stay in your body and so I was put back on magnesium but I was like still I was already one oh, God. I know so I was already one centimeter at like at 29 weeks so my son was trying to come out at, and they were like this is not supposed to be possible because that magnesium is supposed to stop all this. Right. And my son well, like, nope. He's like, nope. <laughs> and so finally, um, I was on medicine for a while and I was staying at 160 over 100. And they were like, you cannot stay at high blood pressure. Like, you cannot stay at this. And I was at, the, I was at the highest level that you could take. And so it got to the point that they're like, yeah, you're going to have him today, which crazy enough, I feel like not that I wanted to go through this, but it was such a God moment, I guess you would say, because my husband's and my, like, date of, like, starting to date and everything was June 21st. That's when we wanted to have our wedding. We just unfortunately couldn't because it just didn't land on a day that – or, like, on a Saturday or Sunday Mm -hmm. that we could. Um, My son – his birthday is June 22nd, but he was – we started on June 21st. So we thought we were going to have him – on June 21st, which was like such a full circle moment because yeah. we're like, we thought we were going to have an August baby and now it's like the same exact date of all that. And funny enough, that's um, summer solstice. So it's mm-hmm. the longest day of the year and also a very big yoga day. So it's like full circle with all of it. It's very crazy. <laughs> Wait a, minute, a very big yoga day? Yes, it is. Like the summer solstice because you do like 108 sun salutations. Uh, hey, huh? 108 sun salutations on summer solstice. <laughs> Clearly, you do yoga, right? I, I do. I, well, no, I've done DDP yoga. Okay. Diamond Dallas Page, but I've never. <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. No, so, I didn't do that. Yeah. So, summer solstice is like, you know how they have those days that's like, oh, spaghetti day. Not, like, that's a big. That's, yeah, every day's a day. A, a, a day, <laughs> yeah. And so, summer solstice is like known as like a big yoga right. day. It's okay. like the day of yoga because you're supposed to do, yeah, on the, on the solstices, like winter and summer. You and do you 108. Should, 108. 108. 108. Yes. 108 what? Sun salutations. What is that? Sun salutations is just like a, 
a foundation of a bunch of different moves, basically. And you're supposed it, to do them 108 times yep. mm-hmm. it, it, well, throughout the day. Uh, some people, some people do do them at one time. I know me personally, I can't do them all at one time. So I know I call myself. A yogi so wait a minute. You yeah. mean, <laughs> all, right, now, all right. So 108 sun salutations, you yes. said. Yeah. So could that be like downward dog and other things? Or so it's I'm, like, I'm confused yeah. here. <laughs> so it's it's like a formation. So you put your hands up, you do forward fold, and you go through the sequence. And so it's it's a whole sequence. So you know oh how like, if you go into a yoga class and you do sequen- certain sequences, you have to do that sequence 108 uh-uh. times. <laughs> I've not done it fully straight, nope. but I have done like I yeah, <laughs> being in my athletics, I have done it, but just not full. And I've done it like okay, I'm gonna do a couple here, a couple here, a couple here throughout the day. How about you just give me some cookies that look like the sun, and I'll make <laughs> and sure I make chew sure them 108, 108 times. times. There you go. <laughs> At that, at that point, it will be dust. Then it won't even count as calories, right? So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, so my son ended up being born on June 22nd, but that's when everything started going downhill. Not that it already wasn't, uh, because I know, I know, because <laughs> on June 22nd, I ended up having him, um, and that was a crazy moment, too, because they told me it was going to be another day. And so when they checked me, they were like, oh, you're only five centimeters. It's going to be another day. And I was like, oh, okay. And And your son said, "Uh -uh." yeah, my son's like, David, the whole time is like, nope, like, don't (laughs) listen to these doctors. Because then um, to save you guys, like there was there were some things that were happening that was like, I, you know, can't be feeling constipated and also having a baby. And I was crying over it. And my husband goes to the nurse and he's like, yeah, uh, it looks like she like it. It looks like there's something going on there. And so the nurse checked and she's like, once you know, I was crowning. And so, and this was 20 minutes after the doctor's like, it's going to be another day. Wow. And so they were not even prepared for him. So I had two nurses hold it. Like they had no like stuff. So I had the doctor running in. I had like the NICU running up the hallway because I, the, obviously he was a premium. They weren't ready. They were not ready for him. And so <laughs> I had, a, I had two nurses like holding me because they didn't mm-hmm. even have like anything to hold my legs. And it was, he was so small that they were like, ma'am, you need to not push. And I'm like, I'm going to sneeze and he's going to come out. Like, it's so, <laughs> it's so, Jeez. it's so different than most labors when they're like, no, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, you met, you like, I need to close my legs. <laughs> he's slipping out. Like, he's coming out. And so, um, <laughs> like, I was like, if I sneeze, we're going to have a problem. And so, um, why, why am I seeing a comedy movie here? It's like, the like, doctor of the catcher's mitt, go ahead, like, sneeze. Like, like, yeah, I'm like, basically, sneeze. like, like, oh, it's funny now. Uh, but, yeah, basically, like, they came running in. You know, I had two nurses. And mind you, I we also joked, too, because I was in the hospital, and I know this sounds horrible, but I was in the hospital for however long, like a, like a week and a half at this point. God. I had an oxygen mask because my son started – his heart rate started going down. So I had an oxygen oh. mask on. I was – <laughs> on one side I had magnesium and stuff and an IV in my arm the other arm I had like a saline and then I also because I needed more salt in my body right. because I was drinking so much water so I had like a saline solution and um, and I can't remember the medicine ha- to make you go into labor because right. obviously they were like we need to break your wire we need to get them out now because of like how bad I was going so I'm attached to all these things I looked like the freaking predator from Aliens and Predator <laughs> Like, we joke, like, pictures of me with my son, like, I with this... You didn't want to do cosplay while in the hospital, did you? Apparently, I had to, right? So, I, like, had this oxygen Um. mask, all of this, right? And so, I, like, can't move. And I'm just like, I guess I'm going to try to close my legs for this. And so, finally, he comes out, and I get to hold him for a full... 25 seconds before they have to take him away. We got one picture with him. <laughs> I can see he comes out probably like, ta da! Yeah, like, hey! <laughs> um, oh, yeah. was it supposed to come out yet? Yeah, oh, <laughs> this is not the date. Oops. Well, I kind of talk oh. about that in my book, like, as a, as a funny joke. But, anyways, um, and so, yeah, and so, like, he came out, like, super fast. And I got to hold him, like I said, for like a whole 25 seconds before the NICU had to whisk him away because wow. uh, because he's so small, yeah. like, like the body heat and all that, like he just, he, he needed to survive that way. And his um, levels were 
like kind of iffy at the time and so they were like because he's so young mm -hmm. and he also was one of those that preeclampsia can also make them like not gain a lot of weight and so he was two pounds eight ounces when oh he came God. out and he went down to one pound 12 ounces <coughs> yeah because when you're born then they like sometimes lose a little weight and so he went down to like a pound 12 ounces oh god yeah yeah at a at one month old you know those um stuffed animals and carters that you can get that are like this yeah. big that's how big he was. Like we have a we have a picture of him right next to one of his Carter stuffed animals. Wow. Yeah. Like he was he was tiny. And so um and and for preeclampsia, they're like, okay, our job is done. The baby is out. But your body sometimes takes twenty four hours to realize it's not pregnant anymore. Oh. And that's when we had the issue that I almost died. So it was like after he came out. Yes. And so I went into help syndrome and it was like maybe it was like a couple hours after I had him. So it was like during the day, I felt like I had bad heartburn again. Um, but then I was like, no, this is a little bit more than bad heartburn. And then it was starting to go on my on my other side, which that's like when they were like, hey, you should warn us if you're feeling any pain there. Because on that your could, left side? On your, left, on your right side, because that oh. could be your liver. Oh, like how okay. I explained, it's yeah, like yeah, kidneys, yeah. livers, all that. And so, yeah, I thought my, like, I kept on feeling this pain, but the problem was that mine wasn't under my rib where it should be. It was, like, right in the middle of my rib. And so I kept on explaining that to, to them or, like, a little bit, like, under my breast. I was like, this is where the pain is. And so a doctor told me, oh, I think you pushed too hard. And I was like, I, like, looked at him and I looked at the nurse who was there and she was the one that was like, she sneezed him out. Like, she didn't push. And so... <laughs> So I was like, thank you for having these amazing nurses that could like talk for me because knowing me, I'd been like, no, I didn't. But I'm like, oh, OK, thank you. And so right. finally, it was like one of the nurses that was taking my blood work. And she's like, I'm curious about something. <coughs> she took my blood work and she was like, you have help syndrome. And they had a doctor come in and everything. But they were like, the only way to solve help, help syndrome is for your baby to be born. And my baby was already born. So they're like, it's in God's hands now. Like that's literally wow. what, yes. And they're like, we can give you some morphine to help with the pain. And so I was on morphine and the hor worst thing about that. So not only was like I, I, on this magnesium, I think at this point they took me out of the magnesium. I was put on morphine. I was like, put on all these things. I remember that I was lying there in bed and my platelets were so low that they were like, if they went um, any lower, I would have had a, needed a blood transfusion. So they were like, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, they were like very low, um, and they were like doing. They did an X or a scan, I guess, on me, and like seeing like my liver was ex slightly expanding at this point, and so they were like, unfortunately, when your body goes into that, that like they can't do anything. Like yeah. your body has to realize that it's not fighting a placenta anymore, that it's not fighting anything. And so I remember being on this morphine and just feeling radiating pain because when you're on morphine, you're a vegetable. Like, it yeah, feels you like you're in a vegetable. Yeah. You cannot do anything. And I also remember being so sad because them all knowing this, like, I didn't realize at this point I was quote-unquote dying until after when I talked to a nurse about it. But, they, like, my husband finally was sleeping and I didn't think to wake him up being like, hey, I feel horrible. Like, I was like, would you guys woken him up if, like, I was really going to... Because I was like, look, it, he's finally <laughs> sleeping so peaceful because my poor husband, too, is sitting there, like, running to the NICU, running mm -hmm. to me. Like, which one do I... Like, which one do I have to, like, look at first? And that's what I feel, feel so bad with him. And I know that some people are going to be like, oh, don't feel... I felt so bad for him because it's like, how do you mentally... How do you deal with that? That, like, your wife is sitting there basically on her deathbed. Your son is sitting there not knowing if he's going to survive. And then you're just sitting there like, where should I be? <laughs> what did the doctors tell him? I don't I, I really don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think they – I think – they mostly said the same stuff to me that they'd say to him. I don't think mm -hmm. they talked to him separately or that I know of that he ever told me. Okay. Um, but I do remember that he was like finally like comfortable sleeping kind of thing after because he was hanging out in the hospital with me right. for like a week and a half. So wow. granted, those beds are, are great, but like I, he's sleeping on the couch. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, they're tough. not comfortable. Yeah, they're not comfortable. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I uh, remember I was sitting there feeling like I was dying. Like, I just felt it. Like, I felt like I was yeah. like, I was like, this is not OK. And I also feel horrible saying this, but like go going through this whole thing, I cried to doctors and nurses several times telling them to take my son out because I just felt 
Right. Like I was dying the whole time. And they were like, well, womb is best and this and that. And I was like, but uh, like you're trying to save the baby more than me. And yeah. like I just felt so unvalidated in that point being like, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like this vessel. Like, that's what I felt like they looked at me. I couldn't shower. I couldn't do anything. It's I, like I a higher like, power I had felt, something in mind. Yeah, like, I just felt like this vessel. And so I remember crying. And my mother-in-law, she's um, very, very in her faith. And so she got mm-hmm. me a comfort cross during this. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just grabbed that comfort cross for the little movement that I could have. It just so happened to be, like, right there on the table with me. Right. And so I remember feeling this pain and just crying and saying, God, my son needs a mother. Like, I can't go yet. Like, my son needs a mother. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning, I woke up. Like, the nurse woke me up to take my blood. And she was like, I've never seen this before. And I'm like, what? And I remember the pain was absolutely gone. Like, like, immaculate gone. Like, I knocked out from this pain. Like, this excruciating pain in my, in, like, in that area. And really feeling it everywhere because I had morphine, right? And so... Um, the nurse woke me up and she's like, your platelets tripled like to the point that like I had more platelets than you should have in your body. (laughs) Like, I mean, it's not bad to have more, but obviously, holy cow. Yes. And she's like, I've never seen it done this quickly. So I was just like, God, I see you like, oh my gosh, like you heard my prayers. Um, I, I was like crying because the pain was absolutely like, I felt like completely different. It was incredible. Um, yeah, it was just insane. Like, obviously, yeah, just insane, insane. And so, um, that's was, amazing. Yeah, it was just, it was crazy. And so, um, that happened. And then with my son, um, a little bit down the line, he was luckily not as, as close to passing as I was. But with him, he ended up um, almost overheating because they couldn't figure out. Or like he ended up regulating his body heat very mm-hmm. at a very young age, um, and there was that one point where he was like at a high, at like a very high temperature. And like babies at this point, they have sometimes bleeding in the brain, which like gets right. absorbed. Um, it's not it's not nerve wracking unless the um, bleeding is at like a level three or four, and his wasn't. His was like at a level two, but with that with a fever Mm -hmm. is not good and so with him there was like a point where they had to like take him away and like make sure like to regulate his body and so for him like that that was like the tipping point that he could have passed like that was the biggest point which was like a couple weeks later that he figured he just figured out at a really young age to like get out of the isolate but they're like they were like baking him and obviously no one knows this because at 32 weeks normally <laughs> they're yeah. still in isolate not and not in like the crib and so um that was that was him but yeah wow yeah and then he was there for 66 days <laughs> 66 days 66 days yeah you're listening to conversations with rich bennett we'll be right back let's take a little break here i want to talk about something very important Are you tired of drafty windows and high energy bills? Of course you are. We all are. Well, look no further than Window Depot of Baltimore. Their energy efficient windows will not only save you money, but they'll also enhance the look and feel of your home. Their experienced team will provide top notch installation and customer service, ensuring your satisfaction. So don't wait any longer to upgrade your home. Contact Window Depot of Baltimore today. Again, that's Window Depot of Baltimore. Go to windowdepotofbaltimore.com or give them a call at 410-941-3499. Again, that's 410-941-3499. Tell them Rich sent you. And how is he now? He's amazing. Amazing. Other than being my picky eater, like... (laughs) He is just aren't all kids. Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> yeah. is. He is just an incredible boy. He is going to be seven in June, and he lo- loves reading. He's playing lacrosse. Like has no, like has no like ailments from this, right. which is absolutely amazing. Because I know it could have gone so many different ways. Like at one point, we thought he needed like a GI tube because he wasn't eating properly, and then he just figured it out. I was I was wondering about that with this. I'm going to say it wrong again. Pre Preclampsia. Preclampsia. Yes. 
if there's any side effects to either you or the baby afterwards? So technically, no. Technically, okay. <clears throat> um, cl they claim no because it's like to solve it. But I mean, there are some studies mm -hmm. because again, I'm a huge researcher um, with that magnesium. It's toxic to your body. So they're yeah. pumping toxins into your body for you to not seize but it's also like if you don't get enough out it could be harmful. Right. And so there's this thing called mag brain which like sometimes I joke that I have basically a fuzzy brain like, okay. like not, not recalling things like having trouble sometimes talking or not remembering words and stuff they sometimes call that mag brain um you could like if my liver expanded a little bit worse mm -hmm. i could have had some liver damage Ooh. um luckily i did not get to that point luckily Good. i didn't get to the like blood transfusions and then some people do stay with high blood pressure for a little bit like i was on high blood pressure medicine for six months after having david really mm -hmm. just to like make sure my body regulated how soon before you got back to exercising? Uh, pro probably like not until nine months for me. Just That's still because, pretty damn amazing. Yeah, but I just, um, I think just after all that and with him, yeah. I, it was more, I wouldn't even say my body wasn't ready for it. I would say it was more of an anxiety thing. Like yeah. I got points, like I remember I would take out my son to like go apple picking mm -hmm. and there were so many bees around. And I remember going to fetal position, like behind the shed of this like apple orchard, almost crying, whole, like clenching him because I was like, he can't go to the hospital again. Cause all yeah. I could think about was him getting stung by bees. And my mom's like, you have a problem. <laughs> and I was like, I know I do. Um, but basically and going through all this until I get into the book part of it, which I know is like why you <laughs> asked me to be on here. Oh, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> no, not just because of the book. I mean, your story's incredible Thank as it you. is. But um, during that stay, so you're in the NICU for 66 days, and I, I, I couldn't leave him. Right. I couldn't leave him. And um, so at the time, yeah, we, yeah, we moved to Bel Air right before I had him. So I was traveling from Bel Air to University of Maryland every single day. And I was staying there for like 15, 16, sometimes 17 hours, how long I could stay. Wow. Yeah. And um, I wasn't eating because I was so, you can't eat in the NICU. Like you have to, because oh, it has to be sterile. Oh, yeah. So I, I would, ooh. I would sometimes pick up like those um, like green machine drinks to get some nutrients yeah. because I could have drinks in the NICU, but they didn't really want you to um, other than really water. So sometimes I, I would have a nurse that'd be okay with me having that. But it needs to be so. Shoot, if yeah. I was you, I'd be worried about drinking water yeah, like, anymore. Like, uh, <laughs> so I, yeah, so I had to be in like a very sterile room, but I yeah. didn't want to leave him. Can't blame and, you. Yeah, and so there was a point where, and it's also like no one explains to you what happens to you because again, mm -hmm. like how I explained, I felt like a vessel, so I felt like once I was fine, they're just like, okay, like no one explains. Hey, this is like what's gonna go on after, or this is but so again go through the rabbit hole but the worst part was i didn't go through the rabbit hole on like google i went through the rabbit hole on facebook and joined, oh joined some groups of like preeclampsia and i had the like so many people that are like oh yeah my like my cousin's wife had preeclampsia and then the so died experts. and died like two years later and i'm like oh my gosh what's gonna happen to me yeah. so that's all i felt and I felt like so torn because I was so happy my son was there, but also at the same time, I was like, I don't feel okay. And all I can think about is me. And I felt horrible just thinking about me while he's sitting there, mm -hmm. like fighting for his life in a little isolate while I'm technically okay at this point. And so it was just very difficult. And um, so I was sitting in the room. And I remember it was uh, the social worker on the floor, on the NICU floor. I cannot remember her name, but she was amazing. And she came in and she was like, I just want to see how you're doing. And I just bawled. Like, for some reason, she just came in and I was like, I, let me tell you my life story. And I just started right. crying and like telling her how horrible I felt and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And she goes to me and she's like, first of all, you need a meal. She's like, coffee cannot be a meal. Right. And she's like, you. It's water. Yeah. She's like, you need to like sit down and have a meal. So she made it a point every single day to kick me out of the room. Really? Which was amazing because that's what I needed. Like I needed yeah. that kick in the butt. Like I, because all the other nurses would like suggest it, but she was like, no, no, no. Like it's your 30 minutes. You need to go. Like she would, but she was like on top of it. And that's why I, I said love like, that. That, that's what was amazing. That's good. Yeah, yeah, like I needed that. And so she, and I think because she knew I needed this help. Yeah. Like I know some people, she probably like, either they would ignore her or whatever. But I was like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. Give me right. all the tools I can use to become 
back to myself. And of course, like I wasn't back to myself for a long time, but like enough to feel comfortable and like well, to, be, like, <laughs> to be a mother as well. Yes. Yes. And so you, it's kind of hard for you to protect your own child. If you're not protecting yourself. Exactly. It's one of the, it's like the airplane scenario. Like you need to put the mask on yourself before you put the mask yeah. on your kid. But it's so hard to think about Understand that, during, that. Yeah. during that time. And so that's basically what it was. She was putting, she was putting the mask on for me. She was like yeah. the next person over being like, put the mask on for yourself so you can be here for him. And um, she basically was like, hey, go make yourself like a healthy meal. Like get proteins, all that, like in your body to settle yourself. Right. And she was the one that was like, hey, like, do you journal? Do you do this? Do you that? And I was like, yes, I actually used to journal. I haven't in a long time. And she's like, go get yourself a journal and write everything down. Just She's like, it doesn't matter what it says. Just get it out of you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So it, the journal that I have that I wrote my book in, if you see the first three pages, it is like just like gibberish. But like it is just like run on sentences, everything, just like getting everything out on how how I'm feeling, what what is going on. And then what also helped was my husband actually helped me in a sense of like almost readmitting me into the hospital for a little bit because because in a, in a good way because I was so anxious about my own self and I tell him and I cry all the time right. that he pulled the doctor that helped me like upstairs or like the upstairs yeah. area um, from the NICU and who helped me with preeclampsia and everything and basically like me like readmitted me to sit there so that she could talk to me and like answer every question I had because I didn't have that chance and so it was almost like I needed that closure of this doctor being like once you're done like there is little to no symptoms like you are fine like other than the high blood pressure and so that also was a huge factor mm -hmm. so I had this help from the social worker I had my husband being like my biggest cheerleader on like helping me in that sense of like Good. basically pushing me into being like talk to the doctor because I was also nervous like because I didn't want to find out if anything worse was right. going to happen and so I think it was just playing all in my head and so for her letting me release it and my husband like letting me release it in a different sense I started feeling like not fully whole, whole of course, because my son is in the NICU, yeah. but like enough that I could sit there and be just comfortable being in the room and being comfortable just watching him and rooting for him instead of caring about, like I shouldn't say caring about myself, but like worrying about what's going on with me. Like I was able to finally focus all my all on him. And mm -hmm. so that's when I would sit there and I would just write. I would just write at random points. Like I learned calligraphy. Good therapy too. It was. And I learned um, calligraphy while I would sit there because the, you're wow. sitting there for a long time. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to learn how to fancy write. And so, fancy I, <laughs> write. And so I, I learned, I taught myself calligraphy while I was in there. And then I, I, I think that's this. a lost art. What? I think that's a lost art. Oh, yeah. Well, I, do. I don't even think they teach handwriting in no, school anymore. No, and I do. I used to, like, when I um, helped out March of Dimes and would raise money for them, I would actually, like, do calligraphy, like, on wood pieces. And I would sell oh, them. Wow. For, I'd sell them for $5 to, like, raise money for, right. like, David and stuff. <clears throat> um, so it's something I used to do. But, again, like, with being a mom, sometimes I just, like, put things off to the side. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I that's just how this book came about. And, really, it was for my healing. Right. Um, I mean, I had people that sent me books and stuff that healed me. Um, there was this one book, Peanut, that, and it was cute because it, it was named Peanut. It was on Amazon. Like, they um, – self-published I, I think somebody else told me about that book really yeah, yeah. So. and it was like the mom and um husband did it and it was just like it was therapeutic to read someone else going through the same thing right. i didn't want to read like a full novel like it was just nice like it was it's their version isn't as much of a kid's book though it's like definitely for adults but like it looks like a child's book it, it was like a it was a therapeutic book that's the best way to put it <laughs> the, the thing is with kids books and, and like I said, I've, before, I've had a ton of authors on here and children's mm -hmm. authors. But what amazes me. Kayla. <laughs> uh, yeah, and her too. <laughs> well, but what amazes me is a lot of these children's books mm -hmm. can help adults as well. Oh, 100%. There's a, there's a lot that adults can learn <laughs> from them. It's kind of like Bluey, like watching Bluey. Like a lot, All right, I keep hearing about this Bluey <laughs> character. I have not seen Bluey yet. Yes, Bluey uh, and what's the other one? Pepper Pig? Oh no, Peppa Pig does not help adults. <laughs> Peppa Pig. I, I don't know. These are just these are characters yeah, I Daniel keep hearing the tiger, about. Maybe Look, the only one I remember is the Wiggles. Yeah. Okay, I mean from when my daughter was young. But yeah, Louie and um, Peppa Pe Peppa Pig. Peppa, Peppa, Peppa Pig. Peppa, yeah, Peppa I don't Pig. let my kids watch Peppa Pig. I don't like her personally. Whatever happened to stuff like 
the Power Rangers and all. They still kind of have things like that. Well, I guess like, that really yeah. wouldn't be for little kids, <laughs> though, right? <laughs> That'd be more like my son's age right now. Yeah, okay. Like seven, yeah. I mean, for so. me, it was like Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Tash. You can't <laughs> go wrong with them. But, hey, I'm sorry. Go yes. ahead. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, anyways, that's uh, like this was like my healing, right? Mm-hmm. And um, what got me in the mindset of possibly even publishing, and it was just like a dream at this point. It wasn't even like I wasn't even taking the steps to do it. Right. Was um, my son ended up being like good enough to get out of the NICU at um, University of Maryland, but had to get transferred to Mount Washington because he just had to learn to eat. Um, so that's a children's hospital. So yeah. He was, yeah, so he was considered um, not bad enough to be in the neonatal care anymore, but still needed to be in like the ICU section of um, of uh, University Ma- or um, Mount, Mount Washington. Washington. And how old was he at this time? At this point, he was like a month and a half. Oh, so, oh wow. Yeah. He just didn't know how to eat. Right. It was just, it's just hard. And um, the... The best way they say it, and I hate I hate this term, but also whenever I say it, nurses and everything are like, "Yep, I know this term." But they called him they called it the lazy white boy syndrome, and I was like, at first I was what? like, "What?" I was like, "What?" And I, at first I was like, uh, "That sounds kind of wrong." Yeah. But then when I say that term, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, the lazy white boy." Like it's it's a known thing that like the little. Nikki white boys just never wanted to learn to eat like apparently like they're wow. just they call it lazy <laughs> and i was like what but yeah apparently all my nurse friends around here they're like oh yeah lazy white boy syndrome and i'm like oh okay i guess this is a, it's a NICU term. like it's it's a known fact that usually like the boys just are like a little bit harder to feed or to learn to feed because they have the tube in their mouth or in their nose and so he doesn't know what hunger is and so he's like well i'm gonna get the tube anyways so okay with that yes uh, because uh, this uh, and we've talked about breastfeeding before Mm -hmm. on here and this is one something i don't know with a premature baby can they be breastfed yes so that's actually what you're that's why he had to go to Mount Washington. Yes, that's why he's like learning. So they do at first they do feed them through. Oops, sorry, they do feed them through a bottle. Um, okay, because they want him they wanted to get used used right. to things. Okay, um, and then they have the tube obviously in his nose so that they make sure that he gets enough nutrients because that's like the catch twenty two with this mm-hmm. is that they want him to learn. But my son was also the one that wasn't gaining weight. And Mm. so they need him to gain weight. And so they can't let him not gain weight. And so it's one of those that he needs to learn but is also getting fed. And I guess the good thing about this is, too, is because of everything you went through, you are – or you were able to do that. Yes. Okay. And so, um, well, we – I ended up – I did end up bottle feeding him only – but I did – do the exclusively pumping right um because david because he wasn't gaining weight and stuff also needed fortified formula so if i did oh. if i did end up breastfeeding him i'd have to feed him and then give him a formula bottle after or they had this machine i remember like i shouldn't say machine but it was basically like a formula pack that i had to that had a little tube that i had to like connect to my breast and try to tape it ever so slightly yeah they were teaching me this and i'm like yeah no i'm not <laughs> What? Yeah, so that if I didn't want to give him the formula bottle after, if I wanted to do it all in one shot. But I'm like, I feel like that's more difficult than giving the bottle. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's like this whole thing, if you wanted to try to exclusively breastfeed, that, but because he needed formula to gain calories, it was like this, yeah, it was this contraption that you like put So on. you have to be walking around almost like a cyborg. Man, yeah. there you go. More cosplay exactly. for you. Exactly. There we Jeez. go. That's what <laughs> I don't, I I don't know what to... character that I, would be. I don't but... know. I'll make up my own character. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, and so with him, I ended up, I did end up mostly biofeeding, but they okay. do they do teach you to breastfeed. They're like more than excited to have you do that because um, again, fed is best. And I am a huge mm-hmm. advocate for that because every single child, child of mine has been fed differently. Well, and, and, but it's good to know if everything that you've been through that you were allowed to. Yes, yes, yes. And they, because you have the antibodies and everything. Yeah. So even though I went through all that, like I still have the antibodies. And so I did, um, I did exclusively pump for him. And then okay. it got to a point that like, once he was six months, I went to the doctor. I was like, I can't do this anymore mentally. Right. And they were like, that's fine. Like, we're fine with you just putting him on formula. Because at that point, he was, like, kind of out of all those, um, like, fearfulness. Mm-hmm. Like, how I mentioned RSV earlier. That's very – that's, like – basically the common cold for us right. really bad for babies and so we were out of that season we were out of anything that was really gonna like affect him mm-hmm. 
like horribly and so they were like we're fine if you just go straight to formula I was like perfect <laughs> <laughs> but yes you can yes at, okay. this, at, at that age you can um, but the thing with them is what they say it's it's not a sprint it's a marathon so for them mm-hmm. eating it's sometimes they can lose more calories because it'll take them like 30 minutes to eat wow and so that was another thing like I would have to sit there and try to get him to eat because sometimes he'd again be too tired and you have to like try to force it and so there was one time too that like a nurse came in and he was finally eating and I remember she's like time's up and I'm like oh my gosh because it's like Jeez. At this point, he's losing. He's actually going to be losing calories right. what he's taking in. And so um, how I got him out of this actually was there was one day that I went to the doctor and I was like, he's not learning hunger. I was like, I, I, like, I think he's sit, sitting, sitting in the state of limbo because he knows that he's getting the tube. Mm-hmm. And so I told her, I was like, I'll stay. They did this thing that you could stay for 48 hours so that you would like stay right next to the bed. And I was like, I don't want the tube in his nose. I want to try to breastfeed him every single time. And that was the longest 48 hours because now the kid knows what hunger is. So he's up like every 20 minutes wow. asking for food and like learning to feed and not really getting it. And I'm like, no tube. I'm like, I don't care if he loses weight right now. I'm like, he needs to learn. Yeah. And that is what did it because I remember leaving after 48 hours and feeling almost defeated because I was like, he's going to have the tube back in that nose when I come it back in. Mm-hmm. And I went in that next morning and there was a mom cause in uh, Mount Washington, you don't have a, um, you don't have your own room. You're in a room with three other babies. Oh. Um, so because they says it's socializing, <laughs> but I mean, it's nice because I think you also see other moms going through the same thing. Right. So I don't know if it's more socializing for the babies or, or therapy like, or therapy for the yeah. moms, um, which it was social it, therapy, social therapy. <laughs> and there were some moms I did really, um, get to know. And there was this one mom that had a baby at, or like not a baby, I should say like a two or three year old at home, her and her husband worked and her work. Yeah. And so she was there at night because she would come home from work, take care of her like three year old, put him to bed. And then the dad would take over and she'd like go to the NICU and they were like on separate schedules for working. So like her and her husband never saw each other, but it was just so that they could like take care of the three year old and see the baby. And so, and she was one of the ones that like, that I was like, I need to publish this book for someone like her because Mm -hmm. to explain to your three year old, like what, why is my baby sister brother not coming home? And so um, she was the mom that was in there that started clapping the second I came in. And, um, oh, there you go. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, she started clapping the second I came in, and I started crying because his nose tube finally was out. <laughs> and then, Man. It was, yeah, it was like a couple days later, he finally came home. So, oh, wait a minute, published in 2021? Yes. So the book's not that old. No. Because, again, I wrote it, (laughs) and then I kept it for myself, and it was a dream, and it was definitely that mom. And then I have another um, friend, Heather, that she went through. Our sons have a very similar story. It's funny. Her son came out of the NICU the day that David was born, and so um, we were connected. We were connected by someone um, through Facebook, and we were able to, like, become friends. And now we joke that our sons are, like, the same person, and she's in Connecticut, and we're, like, really good Facebook friends, and we talk all the time, but we're like, we need to actually make a point so these boys can meet each other because they have such a similar story right um but her daughter uh ended up going into the NICU as well she did not have preeclampsia I forgot what she had but she had something a different medical thing that happened uh causing her two children to go into the NICU and um this was like that was another reason when I was like you know I like sent my poem to her because this wasn't published yet and so I was like you like you need to read this to your son so he knows like why your daughter like you know or like a reason why your daughter um is still in the NICU or can't come home with your oh yeah and then I yeah at the end of my book I do a shout out to like all the medical staff that helped and some pictures of David oh wow yeah (laughs) oh god he's adorable thank you (laughs) so with this with the book yes is it actually in any of the libraries or anything? Um, not yet. So I do have my website that is, <laughs> I do have my website that is the carseatchronicles.com. And so that's where I, I, lo- I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always, uh, that was the thing too. So um, again, this book, 
was just for me. And then mm-hmm. I kind of had the dream. I sent it to some people being like, hey, this may help you out. And what really pushed me was like my friends that, how I told you, they also had a podcast. I read, yeah. it, I read the book on their podcast or the poem at the time. And it was it's a bunch of guys. It was, a, it was like three or four of my guy friends that ran this. And they were all crying. And they're like, why is this not published? And so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And our, like my um, friend's girlfriend was there. Like, th- There's so many people just looking at me being like, why is this not published? Mm-hmm. And so they were the first ones that I text when I was like, hey, I think I'm going to go along and like go through this process. And this process is a very long time, at least for kids' books, because I wanted it in a certain way. I know some people do it in um, different aspects and like they'll go through Amazon, this and that. I did find a company um, and I found a different illustrator and it was just I, I wanted it the way I wanted it. So it took a very long time. <laughs> so with the book. Yes. Because it's it's not everything that you explained to us. It's not no. the whole story. No. Yeah. Um you keep saying a children's book, but do you think this is more for the adults or for children? I think it's a I think it's a or combo. I think it's a combo. And that's usually okay. like when I try to like so I've gone to a couple um like craft fairs and I'll be at the Bel Air um book fair in August mm-hmm. with it. And um I am trying to get it into like more local stores. Um, my my dream is to hopefully get it in hospitals. Um so Ooh. that yeah, that's my dream. And to hopefully get in hospitals and to hopefully um, get in Barnes and Nobles one day and just like, I know it's hard when it's a self-published book to be in Barnes and Nobles, but that's like actually idea. with, well, with the NICU, you pro- they're probably not allowed to have books in the NICU, so right? So they have books in a different room, um, and so I do want to eventually like go there and see because I we actually do it. My phone's over there. Um, one of the nurses from Mount Washington was retiring, and we were able to give him one of the books because he's in my book. Okay. Yeah, so um, I gave them a book to keep at Mount Washington. Which Where is David? I was going to say, because what I would do, yeah. if you haven't already. Because So he retired. Okay. And, yeah, and we were able to give it. And Mount, so I gave Mount Washington um, a copy. Uh, I do want to go to – I just haven't been to University of Maryland. Right. But I do want to give them a copy, and I want to try to see, like, if there's a way to sell it. Um, or, the like, gift how shop. To go to, yeah. Gift shops in the hospitals yeah. would be the perfect place. And that's that's what I eventually want to do. Um, you definitely have to do what you're doing now. <laughs> Get on other podcasts. I'll help you out with that oh, after we're you. done. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, I think uh, you're right. I, I think in the hospitals is the perfect yeah. place. Yeah. Because you think about it, at the daycare. So I've had a lot of people that have bought it. Like, of course, when I first came out with it, mm-hmm. all my friends and family bought it. Right. And there are some people that are like, it's great, but it's such a niche. And I'm like, yeah. the reason I want it out there is because a lot of people don't understand this. Right. So it's like for children and stuff. And I like at my son's school, I've given it to a couple of his teachers. But it's nice because a lot of people will reach out to me if they know that I wrote this because they know someone that just had a baby in the NICU oh. or they know someone. And so that's been really nice. And that's why um, originally I was going to sell this like through Amazon, but I haven't because I love writing a little note to them. And I love like specially putting it together for Oh, them. that's right, because Amazon's print on demand, right? Yes, so yeah, you can't add that little note. Yeah, so as of right now, I do eventually want to get it on Amazon. Um, but the thing is, too, I also have hardcover and they're not there yet. Um, huh? For for children's book to like self publish and to like reproduce, their hardcover is only for chapter books. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that stinks. Yeah. So, and I want to keep it hardcover because I also <laughs> love that <laughs> it's hardcover. Um, so there's like a lot of, lot of you know, loops I have to go through. And so, like, so if people want to buy the book now. They can only buy it from their what we- from, from the my website, website. For yes. now. For now. Yes. Okay. For now. But uh, any intentions of maybe going with the paperback version? I uh, probably yes, yeah. N- and just, that you could do that through I could Amazon. do Amazon and stuff, yeah. So that is that's in the works with stuff. Yeah, I, w- I was going to say because when you and I know Ingram Sparks does it, but um, the problem is I'm so nice, <laughs> and I made my book. Um, I think slightly cheaper than it should be. So I'm now working with Ingram Sparks because basically they tell me like I owe them if I sell through their website. I'm afraid to ask you this. <laughs> Ashley, what's the book selling for? Uh fourteen ninety nine. And they said that's for a hardcover because of just oh. printing and everything. Yeah. That is cheap. That is cheap. I know. I <laughs> 
I don't know my own worth, I guess. <laughs> Ashley, 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 Ashley. I know, I know. No, I mean, no, I understand where you're coming from yes. because you, you want to help mm-hmm. people, which, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I should have put it a little bit more, but it's okay. It's really, it's really for the story. It's really yeah. for the story. It's not. I mean, yes. Because the next book will be I, completely I, yes, different. Yes. Because you have, you have to write your story. I'm serious. Okay. You do. My I mean, chapter? it's. You, what you've been through. It, I mean, it's. A, it, it could be a novel. It could be. <laughs> and that would help a lot of. Not just mothers, but even fathers and and other family members of people that are going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got to do that. Okay. You have, I'm serious. <laughs> you have, it's just it, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the children's book is great too because I love the fact like with this and yeah. if you haven't done it yet. Yo, know, when Dave, have you sat down with David and read it to him? Oh, yeah. David can okay. now read it and, like, he'll choose to read it to me. Okay. You know? And, like, every dress up as a character day for school or book character day. And, um, he what goes is that? in I wearing think a that... diaper dressed he, like the baby he, on the he cover? Goes in, he goes in. No, he'll be like, Mom, can you get me flesh colored clothes? I'm like, No, you can wear green because on the back <laughs> of the book, he's in green because I also. Oh. So I do want to point out because you know how sometimes they look at authors and they're like, Oh, this is symbolic for this. And they're like, no, I just like did the chair that color because I like that color. No, I actually did put a lot of symbolism in this book because really? I did because um, on the back the of the superheroes. book, superheroes, my superheroes. So yes, my book is about um, how you said it's the tiny superhero because he is a superhero because he needs to let his powers grow mm-hmm. to get out of the NICU, and so that's why I made it. It's for adults, but children too. Like it's it's for all because I when I was writing it, I don't know. It's just I. I love telling stories, and so I just made it different because I didn't like what reality was. Yeah. And then when this happened, I'm like, well, this is how children can connect to it. I, I mean, what a child doesn't want to think that their brother or sister is a super, t- super, you know, baby, and that they're a super kid, and that their parents are superheroes. I mean, you truly are a superhero going through the NICU. Mm-hmm. Like, every mom that is any type of mom that has to stay through that is a superhero. I don't care. And the one thing that I don't like is that when I talk to moms about my story, and they're like, oh, my baby was only in there for two weeks. I'm like, I don't care if they're in two weeks, 66 days. You don't know when you're coming out. Right. So I'm like, it does not matter. It is the same. I'm like, don't look at me being like, oh, well, you had a worse story. No, I didn't. Your story was just as bad. Yeah. If you had to be in there for two weeks, that was still the worst two weeks of your life. So I'm like, don't look at it that way. Like, we all had to go through this, and we're all superheroes. And so... um on the back of my book, I have uh, Wonder Mommy, Mighty Daddy, and Super Baby. And Super Baby's wearing green because green is the color for NICU awareness. Really? Yes. And purple is the color for preemie awareness. Which, yes, which I'm wearing my bracelet today from my girlfriend who has her own bracelet company. And so I made um, I made sure I wore that because she made me one for preemie awareness. Yep. And then... Um, uh, the blue and red is because that's blue and red mixed purple. So I had no idea yeah, about so that. So there is very, yeah, there's very much big symbolism in this book because of that. So I made sure that like when I had the illustrator coloring it and everything, I was like, she, I mean, this is an outfit I'd wear every day. It's like a white t-shirt, jeans and like, you know, Converse kind of thing. And this is right. a very similar outfit that like my husband would wear. But um, yeah, when I did it, I was like, the capes have to like symbolize a mix into purple. So that it's preemie awareness because he was a preemie. And then when he comes out, I want him wearing green because that's Nikki awareness. I didn't know that. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> so okay. So. A lot of thought. <laughs> the only place people can get your book is from your website? Yes. Where do they leave reviews then? On my website. Oh, yep. I knew that. Yep. <laughs> they can do it on my website. Um, mm-hmm. I do also have like a Facebook and Instagram page. I mean, granted, you can't really leave reviews there, but I do have a lot of people leaving reviews on my website. You can leave um, reviews on the Facebook on page. On the Facebook page, you can. Um, but I do want to say that if you go on, I just had to make sure I was saying it correctly because I'm like, Car Seat Chronicles. Blah, blah. Um, so my Instagram I have as Car Seat Chat. It's at Car Seat Chat, and if you go on it, you can actually follow the whole 66 Day story of David. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Because when we used to call it the Daily Dose of David, and that was also part of my healing, so I took pictures of him. Like, So I didn't see him for a couple days because of how bad I was, but once I was able to see him every single day, I took pictures because it was easier 
to do that than to like answer everyone's text messages and Facebook posts and like all that. And so um, I, it started this trend and all my friends would be like, okay, what's the daily dose of David? And so they'd go on the Instagram. And so I created <laughs> um, this page back when my book was coming out in 2021 that I took all those photos and I put it in chronological order so that you can scroll and and like literally go through his whole story like oh, by wow. pictures. And if you click on them, you can read what I wrote that day. Um, um, I put the date and everything underneath it so that you can really follow the daily dose. And this of David. is on the Instagram page, this is not on Instagram. the website. Not the website, no. But um, the website has it, so like okay. if you you can like connect to it on the website, and then um, I mean the Facebook's like connected too. So, right. Yeah. But yeah, so that's. So since you love to write, yes, and you're good at poetry. You're good at thank you writing children's books. I yes. know you're going to be good at writing novels too. <laughs> thank you. Do you do a blog on the website? Uh, so I haven't yet. I do have like an about the author, but right. I, I need, I definitely need to start. I think that's one of my things is that sometimes like I created this, but then I get so into motherhood that like, then it's like months go by and I'm like, oh, I should have posted that or done something. Um, but I, I need to start. Uh, <laughs> I, so with, with David. Yes. Okay. How, when you found out later that you were pregnant again, mm -hmm. What was going through your mind? So actually, that's crazy. So um, with David, um, like I, I, I was just distraught. I was like, he's going to be our only child, mm -hmm. this and that. And then there was, I finally, I think it was maybe like nine or ten months. I was just like watching him grow. And the thing is, like baby David being a preemie, he was – so much of a baby for so much longer right. so it was just so nice to watch and I was like I can't have this be my only one and um my husband and I actually had a scare it turned out it wasn't anything like I thought I was pregnant and it turned like uh, two days later I was I wasn't um and so it was just that that like calling the doctor and everything and telling her about like my situation she was like you cannot go through what you went through before right. like that will never happen again she's like you're gonna have a team this and that because at this point I had a whole, totally different team and totally different doctors mm. um also when that is in place like if you've had preeclampsia before they know to put you on um baby aspirin after 12 weeks which thins your blood so right. then it, it can't helps do. your blood pressure exactly yeah. and so um they're like we have plans in place so you'll be checked more often and so um when i first thought that we were and it turned out we weren't um i was like upset when i found out we were i was like oh my gosh dave i can't go through this again this and that and then it's like after we found out we weren't it was almost like that hole in my heart i was like wow yeah. I, di I didn't want it now but now i know like that was almost i feel like another god thing being like no you want this like yeah. you're just not ready and that's what i thought like i wouldn't really call it a mm, I, it wasn't really a miscarriage but it almost felt like one in a sense and i feel like he was just like hey i was giving you this sense of like now you know where you are mm -hmm. like, and how my daughter is like if it really was her she was like oh no you can't handle me yet like, <laughs> i gotta come back when you're ready because she is oh she is gonna rule the world one day that girl and, <laughs> and um yeah so it was really like that one instant that we thought we might be and it ended up not being and i was like wow okay i really do want this right and so Good. And we knew we wanted them close if we did want mm -hmm. have them because I, um, not like unfortunately my mom had two miscarriages between me and my mm -hmm. brother God. so I'm so I'm four and like five and a half years older than my brother and sister and I never liked that because I was the oldest one so I, was, yeah. like, I felt I mean I know now like I wasn't pushed aside by any means I, like I did a lot of my stuff myself because they were so close in age that we had to do what they wanted right um, but I just didn't want that for my kids I like wanted them kind of all like around the same age group growing and up together so, being able to play with each yes, other and all that. Yeah, yeah and that's what i wanted and i know sometimes it just doesn't work out that way that's what i was hoping but yeah i ended up um we ended up getting pregnant with my daughter after david turned one and so oh wow yeah but i again i talked to doctors and everything and i was like is this safe is it and they're like we will have a team on you and so you were doing your research again yeah <laughs> doing all my research <laughs> no that's good though because yeah, yeah i know a lot of people will be a, uh, no, because I, I don't want to go through that again. Yeah, and they don't even bother to research it or answer. Well, doctors. and the thing with me is that 
growing up, I always knew I wanted to be a mom. Yeah. It's like people ask you, like, what do you want as your profession? I'm like, to be a mom. mom. And, like, I was just so interested in that whole process of, like, pregnancy and babies and mm-hmm. motherhood. And even at college, I'm like, I don't know why I'm here because I just want to be a mom. <laughs> like, it was just, like, I was still in that mindset. And then now oh, it's funny. God. Now that I'm a mom of three, I'm like, oh, shoot, I should go back to work. No, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, wow. no, no, I do truly love them. Um, but it's just funny. It's like, I knew I always wanted that. I knew that was always on my heart. And mm-hmm. so, like, I think I just couldn't, I couldn't be set with just one. And I, the, the crazy thing is that I tell people about my story and the silver lining is that the NICU not only gave me, like, the one-on-one on how to be a mom, because the second I got out of there, I knew exactly what to do with him. And right. he was so scheduled. Like, it was just, it was easy when we got home because I was like, I know, like, for the past two months, I've been, like, learning. And they, they give you videos on how to, like, on car seat training and this and that. So it's basically, yeah, they give you so much information. I think we got a video. Oh, my gosh. Like, because you're in there for so long, they have you go, like, sometimes to these, like, groups. And, yeah. like, they'll teach you things. And they'll te- and they won't let you leave until your car seat's, like, perfect. Oh, and that they did. Yeah. yeah. And they have him do the car seat tra- like and all these. And they teach you so much that I was like, I was not... For an anxious person, I was not worried to yeah. to take him out because I was like, I feel like I got this. Like, I, it's not like when you have a baby and then three days later they're like, have fun. And you're like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? Like, I felt <laughs> like I got that extra step. Uh-huh. So I tell people, I'm like, that's such a silver lining because what I went through was horrible. But, like, there were some great pieces to it like I got that extra step and honestly I would never 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 wish this upon anyone but also I would have never changed what I went through because I feel like it it really like it really made me who I am today like it really made me the mother that I am today it really showed me that like you know not everything is just hunky-dory and that it just I, I don't know. I've talked to people about this and I would never want to go through it again. But like the fact that I went through it, yeah. I don't think I could make the story any different. Like David needed this story. Like da- he needed this story. He's just, he's such an old soul. It's like knowing where he came from. You're like, of course, of course this is how, and how we say it too is that, Oh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Um, Muscle spasm. How, how, <laughs> how we say it is that um, we would even say in the hospital, like it's David and Goliath. And we're like, he's David to this Goliath. And that's how we always looked at it. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, you got to come on again. <laughs> yes, I and definitely bring Nicole, because I want to talk about the yoga stuff. Yes, um, I love to. A couple other things, which I'll mention when we're done. But yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming yeah. on. And all of you listening, make sure you get the book. Good. What's the website? Car Seat the, Chronicles? The Car Seat Chronicles. The, dot com. com. The tiniest superhero, a NICU story. You mm-hmm. got to get it. The illustrations are awesome. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And then keep your eyes out for her next book too. <laughs> next books. 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 <laughs> I think it's going to be. I, you know, I have a funny feeling. I can see within the next. I'm going to, I'm going to say within the next five years, mm-hmm. three more books coming out of you. Okay. Easily. Okay. 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 Damn, I, I should have said five books. Five, <laughs> one a year. I can see five books five coming out from you within the next five years. <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to thank my guests for coming on this episode, but I really want to thank you for listening. And I would really appreciate it if you left a review about the show or about this episode. And you can actually do that right from the website. Go to conversationswithrichbennett.com. You can leave a comment about this episode. You can leave a review for the podcast in general. Another thing I would love for you to do, of course, follow us on social media. But send me a voicemail. If there is somebody you want me to get on the show, if you want to come on the show, if there is something you would like for us to discuss, send a voicemail or send an email. If you send a voicemail, if you want, I can actually play it back on a show, too. So just saying. Uh, But no, seriously, I want to thank you for listening, because if it wasn't for you, the podcast wouldn't be as successful as it is. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. 